movement is we have recognized the fact that if you are no longer a member of the European Union, freedom of movement comes to an end. What we have, all, and we were the first to argue for citizens' rights, both our citizens in the European Union and citizens from the European Union here being guaranteed those rights in the future. We are the, we are the party that has always criticized this government because of the way in which they've set their economic policy to chime with some stupid arbitrary immigration cap that they put on and we're not what we have said is that we will always we will always have our immigration policy a fair reasonable immigration policy in line with the economic needs of our country right, but not free so that we prosper but Jake, you're asking for things that the EU has clearly said it will not give. It perceives the customs union, a customs union, the single market, as benefits of membership. I think they're the poison of membership. That's a separate matter. They have said you cannot have the benefits of membership without freedom of movement and without the jurisdiction of the European Court. So in what sense have you left? You're basically saying we should stay but ignore all the EU's rules. They won't have it. Ja Jacob, look... Um... You know very well that in any trade agreement that you conclude, you conclude that trade agreement by an alignment of your rules and regulations. And that's why President Trump wants us to align our rules and regulations. That means to deregulate them in line with the way in which America operates. So you'd have the chlorinated chicken. You'd have the defects level handbook that allows 11 rat hairs every Stick to your 50... own plan, not his. Well, <laughs> I'm not I, an advocate I'm, I'm of rat hairs. I'm happens. explaining precisely why what Jacob is saying is wrong. Because in, when he says, oh, we want the freedom to be able to set our own rules, if you want a trade agreement with the United States, you won't get that. Because Wilbur Ross, the Trade Secretary, and Donald Trump have both clearly so said, you, you, if you want to deal with the United States, you have to align your rules with ours and move them away from the so European Union. So you're making it sound as if you really don't want to do international trade deals. No, not at all. So which countries do you want to do, okay. which countries do, you want to do international trade deals I want with? to do international trade deals with the 70 countries that we already have international trade deals through the European so you Union. you don't want to leave. Why don't you just the be European honest? Honest? No, why don't you just be honest and say the Labour Party's position what, is you, you don't want, I would respect Sorry, you more I'm, if you just came out with James, it and James, said the Labour Party don't... I'm, I'm Caroline I'm would respect you a lot you, more as well. James, just I'm, be honest. I'm, I'm, now, Conservative MP Jacob Rees-Mogg puts forward his argument. This is about trust. Before the referendum, all sides agreed that they would abide by the result and that they would implement it. This evening, of the four politicians here... I'm the only one who wants to stick with what was voted for. Just think if it had been a Remain result. Would we be talking about hard Remain or soft Remain? No, we would simply have remained. And the same should apply to Brexit. People voted for it and it should be delivered. The economics is very important, but the economics is not all one way. The EU is a failing economic model and 90% of future global growth is going to come from outside the European Union. But the issue today is trust. Will politicians do what they promised, or will they run away from their promises? Barry Gardner. <laughs> Jacob, it's not the hedge fund managers that are going to suffer by your sort of Brexit, is it? It's the people who are working in manufacturing industries, uh, who are working in sectors that rely on a just-in-time supply chain, um, it's they who are going to lose their jobs. And in your style of Brexit, it's they who are going to see their, their rights eroded. Can you tell us and tell the audience about Plan A Plus that you were at the launch of just a few days ago? Plan A Plus said that you wanted to end limits on the hours that people in this country can be asked to work to end the precautionary principle in environmental protections, say yes to pesticides residues, yes to hormone-disrupting chemicals and GMOs, remove the, 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 the parity pay for posted workers. That means that workers who come from abroad can't undercut workers who are already here. These are the things that your style of Brexit is all about, Thank and that sure. is why the public will absolutely yeah. reject it. There are two things to say. First of all, the hedge fund managers, by and large, didn't vote for Brexit. They voted for Remain. It's people up and down this country, 17.4 million who voted for them. And if you want tougher regulations on X or on Y, 
win an election and implement them. Let that be decided by the British Give Parliament. Me one. It Give doesn't. Me one. It doesn't. That's what we're asking I'm for. Afraid. That's what we're That's asking for. We, we have a regular series of elections, but this is the failure of ambition for the Labour Party. You think you can't win elections, and therefore you must get Europe to implement regulations that you like. Not this should be done by you domestically, <laughs> because you may not be able to win but elections. But you don't want those regulations. You want to cut them. You want to deregulate. We can decide. The gentleman's right. It should be up to our democracy to decide. And as it happens, I think that most people would decide to maintain the workers' rights that we have in this country. But that's a democratic choice but for the British wouldn't. people. James but you I, I would maintain most of them. I wouldn't maintain the working hours one. Uh, the, one of the points that Jacob made, which I think is, is absolutely spot on, he said that the EU regard the customs union and the single market as the jewels in their crown. And this is why I'm actually less fearful of the backstop than perhaps uh, some of my good friends and colleagues. Because Jacob and others think it's a trap that we can never get out of, but the EU think it is a palace that we will never want to leave. They think that having single market and customs union access without freedom of movement and without money is all our Christmases come at once. Which is why I ask, why would they want to lock us into what they think is the best of both worlds? when actually you and I both know that they are really very uncomfortable with giving the UK access to the single market and the customs union without the money and without freedom of movement. Unfortunately, this argument is all too redolent of the one put forward by Conservative politicians over the years, saying Europe is going our way, and now it's going to move in a British direction and we can be more comfortable, don't worry. The EU gets everything it wants with us in the customs union. It can arrange our trade negotiations. It can set our tax rates. And no representation without taxation, uh, represent taxation without representation, an important principle. And that is broken in this agreement because the EU can set minimum tax rates for this country. That's very good for them. It protects their inefficient businesses and stops us. How many tax rates us. has the EU set for this country? The EU will have the ability to set VAT regulations and um, many, tariff many regulations. It well, it sets hundreds. There are tens of thousands of customs tariff rates of an individual kind that's set at an EU level that would be maintained if we were in the customs union. So it's a really serious point. But it does also minimum VAT rates would maintain being set by the European Union on domestic fuel, on ladies' sanitary products, and so on. Alan Lucas. I wanted to go back to something that you said, Jacob, right at the beginning. You were talking about trust and the betrayal of trust. I want to put it to you that that betrayal is going to be nothing compared to the betrayal that future generations are going to feel, younger generations, when they see what we're doing, what you're doing for their future. And if I could say this, you know, you said that, that no deal is nothing to be afraid of, and I would put it to you that it's very easy for people who are insulated from some of the effects of no deal to be able to say that it's not anything to be afraid of. But, you know, this isn't a parlour game. This isn't some sort of debating society. These are real people's real lives, and people up and down this country are hugely concerned about the impacts of the kind of Brexit that you are championing were still the kind of no deal that you would be perfectly happy to have. So how you can look the British people in the face, knowing that your Brexit is going to make them massively poorer. The point about whether or not people voted for this kind of Brexit, I want to raise that because the vote was a binary choice without being any, any ability to be clear about what kind of Brexit we're talking about. It's clear what kind of Remain we're talking about because that's been negotiated. We Take have it. Small. We don't oh. know what that kind of Brexit wants. You've got three let, let different on. Brexits on, on offer here. How do we know which is the Dare one Dare I say, wanted? this is stunningly arrogant. <laughs> the idea... The, 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 voters, the voters didn't know what they were doing, and therefore they should be made they, to do it they again. They couldn't oh. know because it hadn't but, been may negotiated. May I get a word in edgeways, please? But that also, that these unborn people might vote to remain in the European Union. They're not here. Voting is done by the people who turn up, not future generations who may think completely different things. Their views are unknowable. They haven't even I'm been I'm talking about to people who are views. young now, whose futures are being closed down by your what, kind of what Brexit. What you're talking about is your view, which you then apply to other people, and you were going on for generations as yet unknown. Thank what God. I'm dealing with... Can I just finish this one sentence? I'm dealing with 17.4 million people who won, and this is a loser's vote that is being advocated by people who don't like the fact they're lost. <laughs> particularly that, in terms of trust, we must ensure that we honour the international agreement that we already have, which is the Good Friday Agreement. Your deal, uh, sorry, your non-deal, yeah. doesn't deliver 
on Secretary, any of that? I, I, I don't think that's right. The Good Friday Agreement is actually not delivered on by the government's deal because it gives a different status to Northern Ireland within the United Kingdom without the approval uh, of the people but, of, of Northern but Ireland. But you would see a hard border come back in no, Northern Ireland? No, I wouldn't. Ireland. There's absolutely no reason for a hard border, even under EU regulations. Uh, EU rules require, for example, that food checks are done at the border. It's not, it's not in the EU regulations. This is, in Rotterdam, this is 25 mile, uh, kilometres yeah. away from the border. But Jacob, These things do not require hard border Jacob, infrastructure. It, it, it's not actually the EU here that we're talking about. It's under World Trade Organization rules, most favored nation trading status. If there is, if you're allowing people from uh, the UK and Northern Ireland to, to import goods into the South or the other way, that means that you are treating them you have to give the same deal to okay, everybody else. I, I need to answer that because you may not have been keeping up with the news over the last couple of days, but the World Trade Organization itself has denied that any rule of it requires enforcement of a hard border in Northern no. Ireland. No, that has no, been it doesn't, sorry. The no, 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 no. Uh, Azevedo it, has indeed said that, but I, ha I must make this point because you know the truth of this, Jim. We've got to move on. Azevedo said that. So it's but, been said but, by the World Trade but, Organization, but, but Labour doesn't want but, to take well, it. Well, the World Trade Organization right? chief... It seems to be quite your point, Hold on, Tim. Hold on. Hold on. The, the World Trade <laughs> Organization chief also said that you can't unilaterally drop... Exactly. Paris. There is so most favoured no, 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 status sorry, under can, WTO can, rules, can, and you would have to do that or lose your capacity to have independent trade deals. Which you is you it, can Jacob? unilaterally drop your tariffs to everybody, but you yeah. can't do it separately exactly. unless, under Article 24 of the GATT, you are negotiating a free trade deal, which we'd be very likely to do with the European briefing. Union. But everybody else well, would Jacob, have free Jacob has made the point that uh, he believes that there are technical solutions, there are administrative solutions, which means that we won't need a hard border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. That's one of the exit clauses from the backstop. So you can't be fearful of being trapped in the backstop, but also say we have the escape key because they are contradictory. Okay, you're arguments. arguing for your own deal again. But... Yes, I am. <laughs> well, well, of course. That's you're why I'm supposed here. to be questioning him. That's so. why I'm the, here. The truth of the border is the UK, the EU, and the Irish have said they do not want and will not implement a hard border. Who is doing this? Are we borrowing Donald Trump's wall in Mexico and putting it up? There is no demand you know for a well. hard border. You I'm know perfectly well if there are different regulations, you have to have a border no, to stop smuggling. You do. You do. Time's up.